PR for Mangos. My name is Federico Lisa. Uh, my friend here is Jacques uh, we Today we are going to try to do a presentation uh, to just to change the rhythm. Let's try and try it out. I mean, he's the, the youngest one in the company. I'm one of the oldest. So just to see how it goes. I'm <laughs> <Aren't> we? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> just a little bit of introduction about, about Abulus. What we do at Abulus, maybe you have heard of us, we have won tons of different awards in different fields. We work especially in autonomous, autonomous vision. One of our products that you can see up there, of course, I, I'm showing this image because we're in the right, on the right, not on the left. Right? <laughs> now, this is serious. On the left, this is the state-of-the-art CB for image for recognition object detection in autonomous vision. We're on the right. What happened? We specialize on diff on different cases like I don't know snow, the rain, ice, fog, that kind of things. Most of the people that do CB, like the one in the left, they work in California. And California, <laughs> I don't know. I would like to work in California too. But <laughs> they don't have those problems. So we specialize in these kind of things, and we are outperforming these guys by a long shot. That's why we, we have all those awards. We are here in Montreal, but we have offices in, in San Francisco and in Munich. Right now, we are 30 employees. We are doubling. We doubled size last year. We are doubling size this year. And we are very active in academia and industry. We are here. Uh, we have been presenting papers in all kinds of different uh, uh, forums, uh, conferences around the world. Last year, we, we did our rain, our, our ground A series for 10 million. And um, I don't know if you know the first guys there, GM, did they? Cars. <laughs> they gave us a big chunk of those 10 million. 10 million. So we are backed by the big guys in the industry. So whenever you, if you feel like you want to participate in the next generation of computer vision for autonomous vision, come to see us. Carmina, our human resources is just there. A couple of our developers are there. They are going to see us and in here. So today we're going to talk about this little bit. That just a little, a little thing. The authors of this model is GF and myself. All right. So. What is EMBA? EMBA is, stands for European Machine Vision Association, and it's basically a standard for measurement and presentation of specifications for camera used in machine vision. Uh, the talk today is more about the camera simulator within that, the, the EMBA 1288 module. Uh, and it's going to be about how and why you want to use it. Am I speaking loud enough? It doesn't sound. That doesn't work? It works, it's just like, that's for the room. This is for the room, the other one is for the recording. Go ahead. OK, is it better? OK, OK. So Federico, can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah, we're going to do a lot of that. Sorry. Okay. This one is mine. <laughs> <laughs> <Can you see? laughs> go ahead, go ahead. OK, no. no, I can do it like that. It's OK. Uh, when we're when you have a camera, this is a little bit of physics behind the simulator. What we're trying to replicate in the simulation of a, okay. what we're trying to replicate in a, in a camera simulator, actually it's a sensor simulator more than a camera, is the process between the photons that arrive to the pixels and the digital value that you get in your image, let's say your pixel value. The physical process goes more or less like this. Photons arrive to the pixel. Then it creates electrons. From those electrons, we, uh, we convert that into a voltage. From that voltage, we amplify it. Then we numerize it, and then we get our digital number. That's the physical process. Easy peasy, right? It just took us thousands of years to figure it out. Now, how the framework works to simulate that is basically there's an image that's going to go through a pipeline like this, if you can call it like a pipeline. And uh, well, there are two major steps that you need to do if you want to do that. So the first one is to actually convert an RGB image, let's say you want to work in color, 
to a spectrum. What I mean by spectrum is basically what is physically your color. So it's a bunch of photons at different wavelengths that arrive onto your sensor, and that's what I'm going to call a spectrum, basically. And so the camera, similar from EMBA, will calculate everything related to the number of photons that represents to the conversion of electrons going to make to the noise that is relative to that. Uh, and finally, you're going to get a grayscale value uh, because all camera, including color cameras, output just a single value that is that then needs to be computed to maybe a color image or something. So yeah, that's basically the base workflow we're going to go through. So the first step is basically just converting your RGB image to what we call a spectrum. Now, there's a lot of people that have worked on that, and what you need to do to know is that it's not trivial, and there's no, there's not what one right answer. Uh, basically, you need to go from three values of R, G, and B to a continuous spectrum of well, maybe infinitely high number of values. Of course, we're going to limit ourselves to about 100 values per pixel, but Nevertheless, you lose a lot of information. Um, but for our needs, we just need to suppose a bunch of things, and we're going to use we're going to use a, a method that is the most si as simple as possible to be able to capture this spectrum with a color camera afterwards. So, Federico, can you show the notebook? So very quickly, because this is technical and I know we're the last presentation, so don't want to put you to sleep. So what we basically do, or if you want to use that camera simulator for color purposes, you need to do as follows. So after you load your image and do your imports, you need to convert an image. In our case, this is our image. If you're wondering what it represents, it's something we work with at Algolux to adjust things that we're going to talk about later. To optimize ISPs. <laughs> yeah, of course. And uh, so we're going to convert that to the spectrum that I was talking about. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to suppose that the R, G, and D values are actually normal distribution centered around specific wavelengths that represents the red, blue, and green values. And then we're going to multiply each value of each pixel by that new array that we just created. and this is going to give us our spectrum. So if Federico is going to run uh, the notebook, and you can see these are the three distribution, normal distributions that I just basically chose yesterday. So there's, no, there's nothing really scientific, scientific about this. It's just my choice. And you can basically do whatever you want. So that's, that's not really uh, the matter of this discussion. And if you want to know how what the spectrum really represents. So let's say we want to look at one pixel of the image that we had, and we're going to look, look at its spectrum. And this is going to be the result. So when we run the cell, so you can see that each value, R, G, and B, just multiplied and added the different normal distributions that I just presented. It's pretty simple. Um, and all the stuff, it, this is all it does. So this is what's up for the conversion to spectrum. Okay, just to make clear, in real life, you get it the other way around. What you get from real life is a spectrum that normally is continuous, is not little peaks as we are seeing here, but this is, a, amazingly, this is a really good approximation. We can do it even better if we modify our, uh, our uh, uh, RGB distributions, but why to make it more complex so it's some, something as simple as this works? Now, oh, okay. Now, what, what do we do? Sensors normally have a little layer on top, especially, specifically, color sensors. That little layer on top of the sensor is called the layer pattern is a little color filter on top of each pixel. As we can see here on the little blue, green, and red pattern, each pixel either has a blue filter, a red filter, or a green filter. What does it mean? It means that pixel is going to only see green colors, reds, or blues. And that's how we, cons that's how 
we affect the quantum efficiency of the diesel. The quantum efficiency of the diesel is the percentage of photons that are going to be transformed into electrons. And it's depending on the wavelength of the photon. And so in the framework, there's actually uh, an object to do that. Uh, it's called the QE. And what it basically does is it's going to set the quantum efficiency for each and every pixel of the camera. Uh, in our case, well, there's a function that actually generates that for you. Um, and it's very straightforward to use. You can see it here. You just plug uh, the wavelengths, the peak wavelengths you want your uh, filters to have. And it's going to tile up a pattern throughout your entire um, sensor. So this is, for example, uh, three of the quantum efficiencies that we gave to the sensor. Uh, there's the blue, green, and red, and it's gonna, you can see, I think, right away what it's gonna do when you're gonna capture the spectrum that we just generated from the RGB image. So now, just, just to, to summarize a little bit, we're going to take the spectrum that we generated from the image that we're pushing, and we're going to match it with this quantum efficiency for each pixel, and see what is the, fix, the, the value that each pixel is going to get. And so the reason we want to do this is because we're going to be able to change a lot more things about the image that if we were just taking a random image that already exists and just do some processing or add filters on it. This is going to be able, this way we can change the way the image is literally captured so we have more information about the image or we can change more things about the image so we can have a better, better information about that for any post-processing we want to do afterwards. And so, for example, if we just run the grab method of the camera, well, you're going to see that we get an image that is pretty ugly like this. Uh, just be careful because this is, the un, this is the Bayard image, if you want. So you can see here that it's basically all the pattern that we tiled up to do the Bayer filter onto our sensor. And so in this area, you can see that each pixel that, was, that had the red quantum efficiency pattern is brighter than all the others because we're in a red spot, basically. It's and the, the center of the, the area of the image, this is a zoom of the first 10 pixels in the top left corner of the image. So that is a, it's a little bit greater that part. So the red component, the, red, the pixels with the red filter are going to let, are going to let pass more photons than the greens and the blues. And so what you can do is you can use OpenCV to just debayer your image, and you're going to get back what you had in the beginning. OK, up here is the sensor. The simulation of the sensor is over at that point. What we're going to show here is just extra that you can use to play with, with, with it. This debayering uh, is part of the ISP. Some, sometimes the ISP is in hardware, sometimes it's in software. The ISP is a little chip, a little device that's in your cell phone between the sensor and the display that actually gives you colors, remove noise, adds sharpening, makes you thinner, <laughs> younger, you know, that kind of thing. And, and actually it's true, I mean, you turn an ISP is to make you younger. Sadly. So, we do here is just doing a little bit of debayering on the image, and we kind of reconstruct the same image that we had before. The colors are not exactly the same because the the, the, the video pattern that we put is not the same, and we have no noise because the sensor has all the noise simulation corresponding to the, to the electronic and physical interactions of the photons and the electronics inside the sensor. If we want to play a little bit. Here, for example, if we do another camera, but we just change the video filter a little bit, shift it to the, to the right a little bit, we're going to get an image that is a little bit redder. That's completely normal. And those video filters are physical properties of the sensor. So you have to really specify the, 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 those numbers as you have it in your real sensor that you're trying to simulate. Just to give you a little, little preview of how long does it take. It's 244 milliseconds for a small image. This is 350 by 650, something like that. That is a, a little laptop, so it's 
pretty fast for what it is. Now, what, how do we use this? Right? Because really nice, we have a sensor, we can simulate it, we can we have a camera, we can play with it. But ask, what do we do with it? One of our products, actually the product that we work on, is it's called an ISP, it's called Atlas, and it's an ISP optimizer. So the ISP has hundreds of parameters that we have to find the right values of those parameters so the image is nice, it's good looking according to some KPIs. We're using a set of uh, genetic algorithms. We can, we can sweep and look for the right spot on the, on, on, on the ISP parameter map for the best quality purpose. So in real life, we do this with real cameras and we do it with the, with the, with the simulator. We have a display. We put some images in there. Then it has the lens that the lens normally creates some distortion and some blurring because that's what the lens do. And then we have the camera that has the sensor and the ISP where we can change all the settings and all the parameters of all that camera. Just to give you an idea, here is one of our runs for one, uh, for one ISP that then, um, for one ISP simulator, the one simulated ISP. Here we have one KPI. Now let's say some gamma parameter. And a little bit less. So you can see here in the, well, the image at the beginning are really crappy. It means the, the ISP is really not what's set. But we can see also that the KPI is not giving any back. If you go around the the image is a lot more decent than the previous one. You might ask, <coughs> why so noisy the image? You can make better images than that. Yes, we can. But the idea here was to use a high gain in the sensor so we can simulate low light conditions as we have in Canada because we don't have enough sunlight. <laughs> so this is actually to train the ISP to be the best it possibly can be under those conditions. This is basically what we do. And now, of course, as always, we are hiring. Ah, yes, because we're really hot as company. No, and we have a, know, we have a, a hot sauce collection. We, we didn't know if we put a picture of the team, of the three people, or the, or the sauce, and I thought they thought the sauce was better looking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, thank you everybody. Any questions? Yes? Did the uh, camera simulator package help you reduce the short uh, amount of time to optimize? Is that your main goal? Is that where it fits? We're actually using it to test our, our software with, that we use in Algolux that we use in it. So if we only use images, we can't really, I mean, change ISP parameters because, well, there's none to change. But with that, we can. So we can test our entire software and then so we can develop faster. And then when we get real cameras, well, we, we have other problems, but the development of the software is already done. So we don't have that problem when yeah, we Yeah, actually here, who works with hardware? One, two, okay, we have the three, and that you work with me, so it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you have hardware for the software guys, when you have hardware, hardware really gives you weird problems that you cannot always reproduce. It's really, it's really different than working with software. So, if you can figure out that most of your software problems Pure in software, even better. So that's why this, this camera simulator helped us a lot. And it's actually not that bad. It simulates pretty well the, the, real, the real physics of sensors. Any other questions? Well, thank you for listening. Thank you very much.